So the first observation is since data is so important and the power seems to come from data right now, maybe in the future, maybe soon, we will realize we can do all these things that we're doing today with less data, but right now data seems to be crucial. Then, um, and this data is by individuals, so in order not to give this power away so readily, we have to ensure the privacy of both the data and the model that's being generated based on uh, training data uh, during training and classifying. And this will enable us to maintain power and to maintain value of our data. So privacy is a big issue, both when you train a model and when you use it. And another one that people pay less attention to is that, okay, let's say that you have trained a fantastic model that can answer uh, questions of the sort that that black box was set out to answer. And now it's out there. You want to make absolutely sure that these models are not tamperable. People cannot tamper with them. Or, and there was no bias introduced for profit or control by whoever supplied you with the data based on which you came up with the model. So, again, this sounds like a sting operation, like who is out there really trying to uh, modify models, but as we know, once this thing has so much power, there will also be uh, adversaries who are trying to take control of that power in much more sophisticated and devious ways than we think of. So if you translate that to technical challenges, we need to develop methods that minimize the influence of maliciously trained training data, we need uh, to come up with ways to prove that once somebody or a company or an individual or some uh, you know, researcher comes up with a fabulous model is to actually prove to us that the model is consistent with data. And we should be able to do that you know, efficiently, maybe without the kind of access that a big company has to data, but access to much smaller amounts of data and of less quality. And obviously we need finally to develop secure infrastructures to run these models so that, in fact, people cannot tamper with them. People cannot uh, sort of mold them in ways that will in ensure profit or risk later on. So I guess the thesis of, the, of this talk and the next few slides is that how do we do this? How do we ensure privacy of the data during training and classifying? How do we ensure that the models are not tampered with, that they're, not, um, that they're consistent with the data? So my thesis is that there's really a lot of cryptography, which has nothing to do with machine learning when it was developed, tools, models from the last 30 years, which can go a long way toward achieving these goals. So people often, when they think of cryptography and they're not cryptographers, they think that it really is dedicated only to secure communication and maybe secure transactions. So I want to prove who I am when I buy something on Amazon and I want to send messages back and forth in email. And cryptography takes care of both of these tasks with encryption and digital signatures. But the truth is that in the last 30 years, most of the academic research in cryptography has been on privacy and correctness of computation rather than communication. So the communication problem, there was a lot of attention to it, it's done well, maybe we need to switch from uh, schemes in order to be quantum resilient, but a lot of work is dedicated to private computation. And it's a very good question, what does it mean, private computation? When we talk about computation, where does privacy comes in? Uh, what does it mean, correctness of computation, and who's the adversary anyway? Um, and, but these are questions that are defined in a cryptographic setting. If you think about uh, correctness, if you're delegating computation to the cloud, and you want them to check, you want to check the correctness of what's been done without having to redo the work. And if you think about privacy of, of computation, here's the type of things that come up in the context of machine learning. So if we think about machine learning as uh, sort of there's two stages, right? There is a, a training phase where you have a whole bunch of training data and you come up with a model, you would like to maintain the privacy of the training uh, data and yet come up with a model which is as accurate as you could if the, mo if the privacy was not of concern. And uh, essentially, there's a lot of work that is done right now uh, on this problem. It's a very challenging problem. And it's done really by picking and choosing cryptographic methods of the past. Um, people probably are, no, are very familiar with the notion of federated learning. So it's using things called multi-party computation and other methods defined within cryptography without any attention to machine learning, but seems to be useful for the training problem. And the second is the classification stage, where the model's already developed, and now you have two parties, somebody who's holding the model, and somebody who has some data they want to use, uh, let's say, use the model to classify, and they have opposing uh, security concerns. The model owner may want to protect the parameters of the model because um, they are of value, maybe monetary value, and the owner of the data wants to protect the privacy of their data. So this is a two-party uh, protocol. 
And um, this is an easier problem than you know, to establishing the security goals for both sides, the model and the data owner. And a lot of work has been done, and I, feel, I think people feel a lot more comfortable with this problem than with the training, because it obviously is more challenging.